Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome everybody. Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, this is another session of uh, Under the Umbrella by the Muslim Leadership Council here in San Diego. Uh, the program, of course, is designed so that we can have the opportunity to meet and understand a little bit deeper about some of the members of the Muslim Leadership Council in San Diego and what they do, who they serve, the challenges that they face, and some of the things that, uh, some of the actions they're taking during this pandemic to assist and help the community. So today we have Sister Sara from Give San Diego joining us, and we have Sister Najla from Somali Family Services that are gonna share with us what they're doing, uh, the programs that they have, and some of the services they can offer. Uh, I think now, but before we get into that, we want to bring everyone up to date. You know, every day this COVID-19 situation changes. So uh, I want to hear from Sister Ismahan, one of our uh, board members. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the latest update today on our COVID-19? Uh, COVID Assalamu alaikum, jazakallah khairan, brother Adib. Subhanallah, this pandemic has really been ravaging um, communities globally, like we mentioned, and we just wanted to provide a few updates in regards to the numbers, but also some of the services that kind of uh, went out. I know on a national level right now, 50, about 51,000 people have died from the coronavirus. Um, subhanAllah, may, you know, um, Allah make it easy on our communities. Uh, locally here in San Diego, the situation, um, of course, is, is forever changing. But as of right now, up-to-date information shows us that in San Diego County, about 2,826 residents have tested positive. Mm. So I can't even imagine the number of folks who don't have access to health care or have not been uh, given that opportunity to get tested. So we don't know the full number. But as of right now, the total positives that have um, been outlined by San Diego County is 2,826. And we've seen about 102 deaths so far here in San Diego County. So there are still measures in place in multiple different states um, about uh, the quarantine measures are continuing. I know some states some states have um some states are easing that up easing up that uh, measures a little bit but of right. course we want to look into the medical advice um that has been given um inshallah for for families for people to especially those who are high risk to continue to stay home and follow those measures in california here we're still under those measures uh san diego mayor has opened up some parks um and i believe some of the beaches might be open tomorrow uh, but uh we want to make sure that even as these things are being opened we want to urge our, our community members to stay home, save a life, um, subhanAllah. And just remember, even though we're in Ramadan right now, there's still no prayers happening at the masjid for Taraweeh prayers. You know, you know, you can always tune in on your local masjid to see if they're streaming uh, the live for uh, Taraweeh, but we want to really urge uh, our community to continue to stay home practice uh, the the, the self-quarantine measures that have been put in place and, you know, taking those necessary precautions. And I guess the last update related to Corin, um, to COVID-19 is that the stimulus checks have been mailed out. So I know there's a lot of families that have been, um, uh, I guess, left out from the conversation and from the aid. So make sure you check in with your organizations. Just really want to make sure that folks continue to be supported, continue to be protected uh, during this time, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, it's, 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 it hasn't let up and, you know, it's, it's, um, it's still a time where we need to be super careful with uh, how we, uh, you know, are interacting and, and exposing ourselves. So uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Sister Jazakallah here for your update. Um, we at Muslim Leadership Council have also been serving the community uh, along with our members, the support of our members. And Sister Ruhi, uh, will you uh, give us an update on uh, the programs and the things that we're doing uh, uh, with the MLC? Yes, of course. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Ramadan Kareem. Uh, as Sister Ismahan was mentioning, there are a lot of people being affected in San Diego County itself. So we have this program, uh, which is very much needed at this time. Our MLCSD free meal, uh, free warm meal program. And uh, this program has served over 3,500 meals uh, so far. Alhamdulillah. And the meals are going to the seniors, healthcare workers, first responders, 
and the unsheltered individuals and groups and also any impacted San Diegans in the San Diego County. And this program would not be sustainable without all our volunteers who have been doing a heroic effort in distributing these meals and delivering to the people who are not able to come and pick up the uh, food. Um, Alhamdulillah, they have put more than 2,000 hours and mm. this has been very helpful in delivering these uh, warm meals. And also, uh, I would say that we are also grateful to all these uh, partner organizations who have been helping us in uh, reaching out to the impacted San Diegans. So, alhamdulillah. Yes. And again, we, we are still in need of uh, volunteers and we still need your donations and your support to continue this program. Inshallah. So the goal is to try and continue the program through the month of Ramadan at least. So we're talking through the month of May. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay. Well, you know, we're making an effort, and uh, there are members of the Muslim Leadership Council, our, our guest this evening, as a matter of fact, that can share with us uh, areas that they are working and, and areas that they are helping where those that are impacted by this, this environment, by this, uh, this disease. And so we'll start out with our sister, uh, Sister Sara. Uh, with Give San Diego. I know that they distribute food and they do things in various places in San Diego. So, uh, Sister Sara, if you will, uh, give us an update and uh, introduce, uh, you know, there are a lot of members and there are a lot of people in the community that are not really aware of uh, what Give San Diego is doing. So, share with us, uh, you know, your organization, what you're doing currently and the current program that you have. Think your mic. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Sara Fitih. I am one of the board members for Give San Diego and really excited to be with you all to share a little bit about our organization, uh, what we do, and how we've adapted our services to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so for those who are not familiar, Give San Diego is a project of the San Diego chapter of Muslim American Society. We are a nonprofit organization that was started in late 2016. Um, and our mission as a community-based organization um, is to serve and empower those that are underserved in our region um, with a specific focus on the Muslim American community, um, especially looking at refugee families here in San Diego. Um, our services and our programs are available to anyone who is in need, so we are by no means only exclusive to the Muslim community, um, but we know that historically our community has been underserved within the realm of social services, so we really try to focus on that within our programming. Um, and all of our work is really dedicated to serving um, families that are low income and helping them achieve goals of independence, productivity, and stability. Um, and we kind of integrate that within our three programmatic areas. So we have a family assistance program where we provide case management services to families that are in need. Um, we have a resource assistance program where we're connecting our clients to other resources within the county and paying special attention to culturally appropriate and relevant services, especially for folks that need bilingual services um, and really building on the network of social services that we have here in San Diego. Um, and our third program, which I'll be talking more about, is our food assistance program, um, which people in the community may know as Yusuf's Pantry. Um, this is actually the first Muslim owned and operated food pantry in San Diego County um, and was actually named after the historical um, and prophetic tradition of Prophet Yusuf having saved an entire nation from starvation. Um, so we have a uh, in-house food pantry that we uh, provide uh, food as well as hygiene items um, for families that are food insecure or are struggling with hunger um, that can come and, and utilize our services. Um, in 2019, we were able to serve over 700 individuals uh, through our food assistance program through Yusuf's Pantry. Um, and in light of the pandemic, we've, we've definitely shifted to how we are uh, really distributing those services. Um, so typically, you know, families and clients can come into our brick and mortar pantry, um, they can pick up food in person, um, but 
based on the shelter in place and stay at home orders, um, as well as the recommendations for social distancing, um, we've had to adapt our service delivery model. Um, so we have been following best practice recommendations from um, not only state and local officials, but from other food distributors, food bank and feeding San Diego. We have transitioned to a drive-through distribution model, um, and so this is really to not only enforce the social distancing aspect, um, but also to make sure that we're still able to serve families that are in need. Um, and the way that we're doing that is we have an online platform where families can sign up um, to come pick up a, a box of food. Um, these boxes have shelf-stable, non-perishable items, as well as fresh produce. So we've been able to distribute onions, um, fruits, um, and, and other similar items. So they can sign up online. We're currently distributing once a week on Fridays uh, in three different locations throughout the county. So we're really making an effort to be geographically accessible to folks throughout San Diego since we know our region is so big. Um, but once they sign up for a time slot, um, they get contacted by a volunteer to remind them of their appointment. Um, on Thursdays, we have volunteers that go out to the San Diego Food Bank to pick up the inventory, and then they work to package that in individual boxes. And then on Friday, um, when the families come, they drive up in their vehicles. They're instructed ahead of time that they have to remain inside of their vehicles. All of our volunteers are wearing masks and are adhering to the recommended health protocols, um, maintaining the six feet of distance. Um, clients are asked to make sure that they have clear trunk space in their cars prior to arriving they open their trunks um, a volunteer confirms that they have signed up previously and then will place the box of food inside of their trunk um, and it's pretty seamless from there so low contact it's quick and efficient um, and we've been able to to still serve families that are in need during this time um, let me interrupt you one time one, one second so are you seeing are you seeing some of the same families coming uh, over and over, and when you do, is that where your organization then reach 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 out and try and get them some more permanent assistance? Is that what your Gift San Diego does? Sure, that's a great question. So, um, in in looking at our emergency food distribution specifically, uh, this is our third week of implementing this model. Um, so. I think it'll take some time to see if that pattern emerges in terms of returning families. Um, we know that this is clearly a time of heightened need um, where you know, folks that have been laid off um, or are furloughed from their jobs are really struggling to have their basic needs met. So we are anticipating that there are some families that may need um, you know, to come multiple times to receive emergency food assistance. So we are keeping that in mind in terms of how we will kind of mitigate for a scenario where we have a lot of returning families. We also want to make sure that we are serving as many people as possible. And if there's a new family that has not yet received food from us, you know, how can we kind of balance between, um, you know, those two things? Um, we're able to serve about 45 families every week um, between the three different locations. And alhamdulillah, so far we have distributed an equivalent of 2,000 meals with the food that we've been able to provide. Um, so we are definitely keeping an eye out to see whether or not not there are going to be a lot of families who require um, extended assistance and seeing if it's beyond our capacity to provide them that assistance through our emergency distributions, if we can connect them to other resources like CalFresh or other community resources. Okay, excellent. Alhamdulillah. That's, it's an excellent program. I, I recall, I believe, uh, maybe a year or so ago, I think the pantry was opening a new location, uh, I think. And so uh, there was a lot of volunteers hoping to get that up and running. So, you know, alhamdulillah, it's good, very, very good work. I'm glad that you're able to come on today and share that with our community. I know that there are other organizations that are going uh, a little bit deeper and have a little bit more uh, time on the ground or, or time, you know, in the community. So with Somali Family Services, you know, I'm very familiar with uh, Brother Ahmed there that has uh, is, is, uh, been a very strong supporter of the Muslim Leadership Council. He's been a member since, I think, inception. And I know that their work is very extensive. And so, um, you know, Sister Najla, I'd like for you to uh, introduce yourself, introduce to the community uh, Somali Family Services, uh, things that they may not know about Somali Family Services, and, and just where your, your organization is, is uh, making, uh, making a change and making a difference in the community. 
Okay. <clears throat> um, everyone. Um, so um, as Brother Adib mentioned, my name is Najla Ibrahim and I'm the Director of Health and Wellness at Somali Family Service. Um, so for Somali Family Service is a nonprofit organization um, that has the mission and the vision of empowering immigrants, refugees, and other underserved communities in San Diego um, with the vision of building thriving communities and improving the quality of life of those communities. Um, so a lot of the times we get asked, um, you know, what are what, what do you guys do? What is your service? What are your, what are your programs? Uh, there's so many programs and services, so I'll try really hard to make it brief, but um, our programs and services fall under a couple categories. So we have health and wellness programs and services. We have economic development programs and services where we focus a lot on empowering um, the community to become self-sufficient through establishment of small businesses. So we have a program, a really robust program that um, through, that we are um, working through the city of San Diego to help small businesses get launched. Um, and just in the last year, I think we we gave over, I think fifty four thousand um, dollars in terms of business grants and loans and um, assistance. Um, so that's one of the programs that falls under economic development. Okay. And then. Great. Um, and then we also have programs focused on refugee integration. So a lot of the um, clients that come seek our services are uh, newly arrived refugees, um, you know, asylum seekers, asylees, um, even though things have changed a little bit in the last few years, but um, there's a lot of assistance that they need and a lot of navigation through different systems, whether it's the immigration system, whether it's the economic system, the healthcare system, employment, housing, you name it. So there's so many different things that they need and we help them through case management, um, connecting them with employment, helping them pay for some of like, you know, let's say we need to help them pay for a security guard card, for example, things like that, just to give them that hand, lend them that hand mm -hmm. to get them started and launching them into um, a job. Um, and then also connecting them to services, um, providing translation and, um, and even transportation sometimes to our clients to help them um, be able to seek those services and access those services. Um, additionally, uh, we have been providing in partnership with um, the Islamic Center of San Diego, an emergency assistance um, fund, and so helping um, community members connect with that has been really amazing. Um, I think from last year, we had over 200 clients um, participate in that program, helping them pay for bills and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And um, additionally, and, and, and the community we serve is so diverse. Um, we were really surprised to see that in our last year's report, um, when we looked at our data, that we had over 20 different ethnic communities that were served in our programming. So that was really um, amazing to see our reach and um, on within different pockets of the community. Um, mm -hmm. Additionally, um, so um, we also have a youth leadership um, type of program where we help um, um, youth access higher education, get a lot of support in terms of academic enrichment opportunities, whether it's internships or field trips to institutions, higher education that they've never had the opportunity to attend before, um, providing tutoring, things like that. So there's a variety of um, programs. Um, and then now with the onset of the COVID-19, we really had to uh, dramat dramatically shift over some of our priorities because the needs are so um, great and, there's, and they're constantly emerging. Um, and they're and they're like really basic things that you know some of us might take for granted, such as accessing food, housing, being able to you know keep a roof over your head, getting um, you know being able to feed your family, getting um, some you know medical services, things like that that might seem you know easy or or basic to some, but this is really <laughs> life or death <laughs> essentially, and so. Yeah, so it's really challenging and we've had an overwhelming number of requests. Um, I think in the last uh, three, four weeks, I would say we've had over 200, 200 households um, um, seek services through us and and you know the household sizes that we serve are really large so that's probably over a thousand people asking for help whether it's with um, accessing food or um, help with um, rental assistance utility bills um, you know medication things like that 
Um, and so in order to shift our workflow, we really, and, and, and to keep up that social distancing measures that have been recommended, we, are, we have shifted over to more of like virtual, over the phone, um, things like that appointments so that people can still access our services, um, but at the same time, keep, that, um, keep them safe. And mm -hmm. so um, through that, we first created a emergency assistance um, form so that people can contact us and request services. And that's where I was getting some of those numbers where we had the, uh, over a thousand individual households come um, seek, seek services. Okay. Uh, and so we've been helping them connect with, um, for example, um, CalFresh, so, um, which is a, a program that supplements their food. And so we've helped them, you know, apply, um, go through the application. Um, and, and, you know, with a lot of these community members, there's a lot of language and cultural barriers. So it's not like that they can just, you know, we can hand them a form and they'll complete it. Some of them really need us to go through and help them fill out those forms. Um, and so we've enrolled many community members into CalFresh now. Um, and another um, need that came up, for example, is transportation, um, especially like the elderly who now don't have their family members that usually are able to assist them uh, um, because of the social isolation measures. So we've been able to establish a partnership with Lyft. Um, so Lyft gave us, um, in the month of March, we had like $5,000 worth of um, free lift rides so we were able to distribute that out to the community and then um, for this month we've also got another additional five thousand dollars worth of free rides so we are working on um, um, distributing that to the community as well just so that they could have that free transportation um, and so yeah there's just a lot of different things going on <laughs> you know I know that there's uh, there's a lot of information and I, I, I know that sister Ruhi and sister Ismahan I had some comments and questions as well. I think Sister Ruhi, uh, you had a question or so when we were gonna, when we said these guests were gonna be on today that you wanted to ask, so by all means. Yeah, thank you so much. Sister Sarah, you were already talking about the different model that you had to come up with in this COVID-19 situation. So initially when this started happening, this pandemic uh, impacted your organization, what were the, few challenges that you had to go through to come up to this model? Yeah, so I mean, the first one, when you're kind of thinking about shifting your entire operating strategy to a different model, you really have to think about um, kind of the financial resources to make that happen, as well as kind of the, the people resources to make that happen. So we knew that we were going to need a lot of volunteers to be able to go to the food bank and stock up on enough food to be able to have to distribute to the families on Fridays, assemble those boxes, um, contact the volunteer, uh, contact the clients to let them know about their appointments explain the safety protocol to them. Um, we also wanted to make sure that our volunteers were properly trained um, for those health and safety protocols. So we mobilized really quickly to hold a volunteer webinar to let folks know of, you know, the areas in which they can become involved and what our expectations were and, and requests were to maintain not only the health and safety of volunteers, but also the health and safety of our clients. Um, and then thinking about, you know, also connecting with our community and how we can engage the community more broadly in supporting this work. Um, I mean, right now there, there is no end date to this pandemic. We don't know when things will be able to go back to our kind of normal operations. So in order to be able to sustain our emergency distributions, um, the, that financial support is also really important so that we're able to provide um, really comprehensive items within the food boxes that families are receiving, um, especially as we're thinking about Ramadan and, and continuing these services throughout the month of Ramadan. So, Sister, uh, Sister Isman, I think you had a, a question about uh, the activity or what the organizations were doing uh, during this month of Ramadan. You had a question or two? Yes. Um, so, Jazakumullah Khair and Sarah and Najla, subhanAllah, I know you both for a very long time. And, you know, um, alhamdulillah, I got to work with uh, Suzanne um, more so and also with Brother Ahmed. So, really, just props to both of you and just having you and your organization and your membership kind of having the boots on the ground and really helping to provide that safety net for, for individuals, subhanAllah. Um, but I also kind of am um, aware of also the partnership between both of you 
um, and MCS as well in terms of making sure that not only is food provided and the different programs that you're all running, but also coordinating um, as well. Um, so really appreciate you both for that. My question is really geared more towards now that today's the first day of Ramadan and we're in Ramadan right now, um, alhamdulillah. And so just from both of you, what you mentioned about, you know, what you're doing, what your organizations have been doing, and how y'all have had to shift the dynamics of, of the work, like much of um, different organizations in society uh, in general, what are some of the hopes that you have for this Ramadan? More beyond just what are you providing for the organizations, you know, um, by, uh, through your organizations, what are some of the hopes and, 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 and challenges that you're thinking about um, heading into the rest of the month, subhanAllah? There will definitely be more families that will be in need. Um, you know, there will definitely be more families. I mean, just today, subhanAllah, we see five calls of folks who, who were not able to, um, you know, get iftar or just really, you know, utilize subhanAllah and, you know, we want to take advantage of the warm meals that M M M MLCSD is providing as well, um, inshallah. So just really just walk us through what, what, what does your hope look like for this month, despite the challenges that we face. And maybe we can start off with either one of you. All right, Sara, go ahead. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, one even before the pandemic for Give San Diego and with Yusuf's Pantry more specifically, one of the values that we have within our service delivery is making sure that our clients are getting access to food with dignity. Um, it's really hard for someone to admit that, that they're in need or that they don't have the resources to maybe put food on the table for their families. So even as we're looking into shifting our operations to this emergency food distribution model, and especially within the month of Ramadan, we want to make sure that that feeling of dignity is still in place and that we may maintain that to the best of our ability for our clients. Um, so specifically for the month of Ramadan, you know, we want our families to feel like it's still something that they can celebrate and enjoy with their families. And so alhamdulillah, this week we were able to uh, distribute boxes of dates uh, to the families that were coming in um, to pick up their, their food boxes. So they were still able to receive their box of staple items and then also receive a box of dates as well, um, just to make them, you know, make sure that families felt like they're starting Ramadan off and they can, you know, break their fast with dates um, as something that's really important. Um, no matter, you know, our background or our traditions, that's something that as, a, as an ummah, that something is really valuable. So alhamdulillah, we were able to do that and um, we'll continue to provide dates every week uh, as we continue these emergency food distributions. Um, so it's something small, but really brings not only the spirit of Ramadan, but also makes families feel like, you know, they are cared for and respected when they're coming and seeking services. Alhamdulillah, that's very good. Um, so I'll jump in and talk about um, kind of like our hopes as uh, Samatham service. Um, and very similar to what Sister Sarah said, we really do want to maintain the dignity and integrity of these families and make sure that they are getting what they need and we're doing it in a way that is very respectful of them. Um, so even though we're not, a, we don't have um, direct like connection with um, providing food, for example, but we have really great strong relationships with our partners and we're hoping to continue partnering with them and referring families and community members that seek our services. Um, since we've been in the community over 20 years now, I think we have a lot of trust and really strong and deep relationships with the community. So um, we are kind of like their first point of contact when they um, need any type of service. So for us, it's important to continue to strengthen and expand our partnership in our relationship so that we could effectively uh, refer community members to services that are appropriate. Um, additionally, um, as an organization, we're hoping to continue um, seeking um, funds that um, can directly support the immediate needs of the communities that can help them pay for their bills, for, to purchase food, um, etc. cetera, um, um, because those are really, really essential right now. Um, and a lot of things that are coming down from the government, is, it takes its time and the community and the families really need help right now. And so we've been fortunate to be able to secure some um, couple funding areas so that we're now working on finding what's the best and most effective strategy to just redistribute those funds as quickly as possible so that's one of our hopes that inshallah happens during the month of ramadan additionally um because we are like a source of information 
for the community. We are hoping to continue to, to strengthen that and develop really effective means of communicating with the community. So one of the ways that um, we've been doing, especially with the help of uh, Sister Ismahan, is having weekly teleconferences with communities so that they could get the correct information. And so that's also an opportunity to dispel misinformation, which could be really dangerous at, in, this, in these times. So that's another area is to continue developing other online digital ways of sharing information so that um, um, the community is empowered and informed. Um, and then additionally, we're working with other partners in the areas of health, like telehealth and um, um, uh, even with uh, small business and things like that to really strengthen um, um, like resources for the community. So as soon as, inshallah, we are out of this, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 situation or as we enter a new normal that the community can relaunch itself um, as quickly as possible and they can continue um, thriving. Inshallah. SubhanAllah. <laughs> yes, Somali Family Services, SFLs, and, and, and Give San Diego, you guys are doing a tremendous job. Um, I think what we want to do here is we wanted to, again, uh, the whole point of the Under the Umbrella uh, series here is to allow the community to hear about organizations such as yours. From time to time, we see some of the things that you do, and there are, there are a few people, believe it or not, there are a few Muslims and few communities that know somewhat about your program, but you'd be amazed at how many people are not aware, uh, even with the, the number of people that you serve, that there's still lots of people out there that are, are lost in a sense and don't know where to get the help. So inshallah, the one thing that we can do, hopefully with our program or with our members coming together uh, under the umbrella is to devise ways that we can market and, 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 and spread this information and get it out there, you know, so that more and more people in the community can uh, find these types of resources that are put together for their benefit. So inshallah, that's, that's our hope. Uh, and that's one of the things that we want to continue to work on. Um, I don't know if, if Sister Ismahan or if Sister Ruhi had uh, any other questions or comments. Uh, we want to wrap it up. We have, it's, unfortunately, it's a short section. We could probably talk all night about the things that we want to do and can do. Uh, but um, we, uh, we do want to wrap it up and we do want to uh, uh, let there be any other last comments or, or questions. Sister Ruhi and Sister Ismahan. I just would like to thank you, uh, both of you, for coming and joining us and sharing about your organizations. I have a little bit battery left, and I would be very quick. I would say <laughs> it was really amazing to hear how there are some joint efforts and how organizations are working together at this time, where it's a huge need for all of us to come together and work together. And also for all the people who have joined us, and they're watching us. This is our um, Under the Umbrella initiative where we all want to see what all our member organizations are doing. And also we want to get some updates. So tune us again next week and uh, look at, uh, so you can uh, watch us with the MLCFD Warm Meal Program mm -hmm. updates and Sister Ismahan will do the COVID-19 updates and we will have a new organization and we will see what they have to offer. Yes, Sister Ismahan. Yeah, on, I just really want to echo uh, what Sister Rohim mentioned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless both of you. I know, um, um, uh, subhanAllah, just the uh, volunteers with, with Gibbs and Deacons also been helping with um, the uh, MLC Meals Program. SFS is a sponsor of the Meals Program. Uh, mashallah. So, so many different ways that not only are you giving back to the community, but also thinking about the collective and collaborating um, together for, for a very long time. And I think this is the this is the message that we want, especially as board members, is highlighting the different organizations, but also the beautiful collaborations and ways that folks are coming together, and then also continuing to support the mission and vision of MLCSD. So Jazakumullah khair and both of you to your teams, um, and keep up the amazing work, inshallah. You're impacting lives, you know, you're, you're saving lives on the ground, honestly, with, with a lot of the different services that you're providing. Um, so I wish we had more time to dive a little bit deeper into so many of the other amazing programs that you all have, um, inshallah, and hopefully one day we'll be able to, but Allah bless you both and your organizations, inshallah. Yes, inshallah. So with that, we want to conclude our session here with uh, Sister Sara and Sister Najla, uh, Give San Diego and Somali Family Services. Uh, two uh, organizations in the San Diego community that have been here many years and doing lots of work on the ground and in the communities. So may Allah reward you and continue to give you strength and continue to give you the resources to continue your work, as a matter of fact. And so uh, with that, we want to, again, thank you, Jazakallah Hare, 
uh, Ramadan Mubarak once again, and uh, inshallah we can get past this and, and get together and, and, and work a little uh, a little closer and a little harder on the task that face this community and face San Diego. So inshallah, next time. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum